Hi there. Now before doing part B of this question, just to recap, we were given a particle P moves on the x-axis and at time t seconds the velocity of P was v meters per second in the direction of x increasing, where v was equal to 2t squared minus 14t plus 20 and t was greater than or equal to zero. Now in part A we had to find the times when P was instantaneously at rest and if you watch that video you'd have found that uh, we worked out that t was 2 and 5 seconds. Now in part b we're being asked to find the greatest speed of p in the interval of t greater than or equal to naught but less than or equal to 4 seconds and this is for 5 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back I'll run through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, to do this, this is quite this can be quite tricky actually, I feel, because uh, what I'm going to do is just look at uh, this graph first of all and put on it what we've just found. If we were to draw a velocity time graph for this particular problem, it's going to look, say, something like this. This would be our t-axis and this would be v. And it's a positive quadratic equation here. So it's going to be a parabola, u-shaped parabola, looking something like this. Because we know that v is naught when t equals 2 and t equals 5. So if I just mark those points in here, this is when t equals 2, say, and this is when t equals 5. Now, I can see that when t equals 0, v will equal 20. So it's going to start, say, somewhere up here. This is not drawn to scale at all. But uh, we've got a parabola then coming down through here, down through the two. It's going to go round here somewhere and uh, up through the five and carry on up like so. OK. Now, where's that greatest speed of p going to be in this interval from naught to four? Well, if I mark 4 in and say it's about here, OK, I'm not too sure how far down this is going to go. And we've got several ways that we can check this out because, it's, as I say, it's not drawn to scale. For all I know, this could go much further down than this is 20 units up. So in order to find out this lowest point, one of the ways that I could do it is to differentiate this again which gives us the acceleration if you differentiate it again. And it's essentially, at this point, the gradient is zero. Okay, It's reached its maximum acceleration. So if I say the acceleration is a, we can get a as dv by dt. There is another way that we could get this lowest point. I'll show you in a moment. But uh, differentiating this with respect to t, OK, we differentiate that equation there, we're going to get 4t minus 14. And so when that acceleration, dv by dt in other words, equals 0, we've got that therefore 4t minus 14 equals 0. And working this out, if you add 14 to both sides and divide by 4, you'll end up with t equaling 14 over 4, which is 3.5. And we should know, really, by the symmetry, this is the other way, that because the curve crosses the axis here between 2 and 5, midway between 2 and 5 is going to be at 3.5. So I could have actually got that value of t very easily rather than necessarily doing this method. But uh, I just thought I'd run through that as another option. But now that we've got t equals 3.5, we can find out what this value is by substituting it into our equation for v. So when t equals 3.5, if we put it into here, we end up with v equaling 2 times 3.5 squared minus 14 times 3.5 and then plus the 20. And if you work this out, it comes out as minus 4.5. 
minus 4.5 meters per second. So this value down here is at minus 4.5. Clearly its speed then would be 4.5 meters per second, but it's not the greatest speed. The greatest speed then is at this value here when t is naught, its initial speed, it was 20 meters per second. So therefore I'm just going to say that the maximum speed, okay, must equal 20 meters per second.